experiencing things, you know. And he will come and say, Daddy, Daddy, what is this? And we say, well, God, that is not from God. That God doesn't like that. This is what God likes. This is what the Word of God says. That one is from Satan. And you just make it plain. It's better they know the truth from you now than to hear a word through from outside. Amen. Amen. Can we all stretch out our hands upon them? Amen. And you are going to bless them. And can you speak life to them? Yes, sir. Speak life unto them and put your hands upon them and bless them in the name of Jesus. For these are the generation of the upright, the seed of the mighty, the seed of the, of, of the, of the righteous man and woman. The Bible says they are mighty and they are blessed. They shall be mighty in the land, in Milton, in Canada, in North America, in this world. Wherever God is taking you, you are mighty. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. You go to school and you are going to be the best in your class, okay? Why? Because the Spirit of God is inside you. It gives you wisdom. It gives you courage. It makes you strong and confident. Amen? Amen. There is no fear. Don't be afraid of anyone or anything. Okay, buddy? No fear. No fear. Alright? When you go to school, your good God is going to give you good friends, great teachers, and you will know the truth. You will learn what the school teaches and you will grow to become very important people. Okay? In Jesus' name. Amen. You are far from oppression for there is no fear in you. And from terror, it doesn't come near you. Okay? No evil shall befall you. You will go to school, come back, no accident, no playground accident, no bullying. Any spirit that moves anything contrary to God's will is destroyed for your sakes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any mouth that will rise up against you directly or in anybody who sets up anything negative against you will fall for your sakes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah. I know the word, I don't know in yeah. your head, but even our grandchildren that are that everywhere they are, the same spirit, the same blessing rests upon them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your please flip over to the book of Romans, chapter 4. It was a single letter that Paul wrote. But for the readership. And preference the translators of the scriptures broke it down into chapters. Okay? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. So it's just a single letter we are reading. And if you see, it started by a question. So what does Abraham, our father, now have? It's a continuation of the argument from chapter 3 where he says we are not justified by works, but we are justified by the law of faith, by faith. Amen. So now he says, but what about Abraham? Because Abraham came before the law was given. So he said, so how did he get justification? Now let me say something. The scholars, uh, uh, rabbinic scholars, the, the, the Jewish tradition, the rabbis will teach wrongly that <coughs> Abraham actually, in anticipation of the law, lived to meet all the requirements of the Ten Commandments. That is why God justified him. And Paul, by the Spirit of God, clearly refuted that uh, opinion by saying, no, actually, Abraham, as an example and as our, for our father of the faith, was declared righteous just for a single thing he did. And what was it? He believed God. Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. Abraham believed God. And God said, you believe me, therefore, I will credit into your account, just like some of us have, <coughs> you, know, don't, you know, some of us have money lodged into the accounts of our children already, you know, waiting for it to grow, the money to grow. 
and you spin it around to keep growing, you know, but that is your son or daughter's money, if you know what I mean. So it's the same way he, he didn't earn it, or she didn't earn it, but you, the father, because of love and generosity and forward thinking, you took money and you lodged it. This 10,000 here is for my son here. This 15,000 here is for the older sister here. This one here is for the middle child here. And the other one, you know how you lodge money into the account? Why? Because it's your child and you're thinking ahead. He doesn't even, he's not even aware that there's any money. So what he asked for is pizza and candy. And he begs for it. Please, can I have, can I have ice cream? He has a hundred thousand locked in the account. You should ask for something more reasonable if he knew. You know what I'm saying? But he doesn't. Or she doesn't. Why? Because it's a child. Faith qualified Abraham for not works, faith, not works, faith, for that account or to that account. Faith is the reason why God said, because you believed my faithfulness, you believed me. Therefore, righteousness, which is my nature, I will credit it to your account. So from today, this is my righteousness is for you. I declare you righteous. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes, it makes sense. sense. That's, that's all that chapter 4 is about. Uh, and, I, and I was looking at this. The Spirit of God said to me, I want you to talk about my believability, my credibility. So I'm going to just divert a little bit and talk about the credibility of God. Amen. The credibility of God, if you talk about the word credible, the only person that this word credible is suited for is God. He has never said, um, um, no. He has never said, uh, I didn't quite mean that. Never. Once and never will. He is straightforward. He knows the, the end of a thing before it starts. He is the all-knowing, the all-able God. He is reliable, dependable. Amen. Amen. At the age of 75, God came to Abraham at 75. Most, in our day today, most people are beginning to retire. That was when God came to Abraham and said, I want you to move, pick your family and move out of this area. I'm going to show you somewhere where I'll take you to. I'll show you a land where you will reside. 75. 75. And Abraham packed his suitcase with his wife and started moving. And as God said, and I will bless you. I will bless you. I will bless you. I will do what? Bless you. And he said, he will multiply you. He said, and I will fight against anyone who fights against you. In other words, those who bless you as you obey me, I will bless. Not you. I will bless. And those who, who, who curse you, don't worry about retaliation. I will retaliate for you. Just keep busy doing what I have asked you to do. And that is going on your journey. Pursue my purpose. I take care of the rest. And, and, Abraham, and Abraham, Abraham obeyed God. And when he obeyed God, he left his home. Believing in God is beyond just accepting in your mind. There has to be an equivalent or responsive or responsible step of action. If not, it is not belief. Without faith, it is not possible to please God. But faith is an active word. It's not a dormant, docile word. It's not a it, belief. It's a verb. It's an action word. In the book of James, God, the word of God says, Show me a man with faith. 
show me your faith and I will show you my action based on faith. He said, for faith without equivalent action is what? Dead. Amen? Amen. Faith without works is dead. And this is where the problem of the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, is. We get excited about the word of God, but we do not do what he says. If you know what I mean? If not, look at the number of churches in our community. If everybody shall say, yes, I'm going to go out, I'm going to do what the Word of God says I can do, and practice it, can you imagine? There will be a revolution here. Instead of just, you know, we go to church and come back and sit down and we go to church, every church, every, you know, that is, that is not faith. You have faith? Oh, yes, I'm a person of faith. Really? If you're a person of faith, your actions must show. Praise God. Come on, praise God. Amen. Come on, praise God. Amen. And someone said to me, well, but pastor, what about when, when I obeyed God and I went and I did that and it did not work out? I said, continue to do it. Have you seen a child walking for the first time, got down from mommy's lap and he started to walk? No, you have to practice. You have to practice. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he said, who, those who through practice have perfected if you practice, it says strong meat is for them who have exercised their senses. It comes by practice. It comes by practice. It comes by practice. It comes by what? Practice. Everything in life that you're going to, every step that you're going to make or take forward requires faith. And there is also an enemy to, that is ready to push against you. Don't need to invite him. Or oh, the enemy is going to come. He's going to push against you. So what do you do? You require your faith, you have your faith, and apply your action. And as if you don't quit, faith always wins. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God told Abraham to move and Abraham moved. I remember when God told me to start ministry. 1999 or so, yeah, 1999 to start New World Ministries. That time I was already, I was returning from a mission trip. I went to five countries, from one to another, to another, to another. I came back totally exhausted, very, you know, lost a lot of weight and came back. I said, okay, I'm just going to just go and rest at least for the next month. I don't want to go anywhere or preach anything. On the way, God said to me, when you get home, start what I have told, called you for. Really? And I had to call my associate pastor, who had the associate, you know, been my assistant in one of the churches where I planted. I said, please come down to my city. And I said, we're going to start. The first thing that I said to God was, Lord, I'm by myself. And you can see that I have no money. That was what I said to God. And God is not, it doesn't mean words when he answers. He took me, he told me to open to the book of Isaiah, and I opened. And the place says, look at Abraham, your father. I called him alone. And I blessed him, and then I multiplied him. And he left the room. Amen. That was all. Amen. So I had to stay with that verse. It, it's not somebody I'm going to say, wait, wait, you're going to pull him back and say, wait, no, no. He has declared his word to me. So I had to stay with that word and either believe it or neglect it. And the more I stayed with the word, the more it took a hold of my spirit. And I said to my pastor, hey, come quick. Is there anything going on, sir? I said, we're going to start. He said, praise God. Because they've been waiting for me to stop. And then I said, okay, you know computer, this is what I need. And he designed the thing and we went by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. And to fulfill God's word, when he says, and I will bless Abraham, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to use my story because Romans 4 says, the same way God operated with Abraham is the same way he will do for anyone who believes. 
Amen. Amen. Come on, amen. The same way God walked with Abraham, verse 23 and 24 and uh, 23 to 25, there it says, it says, was this written just for Abraham? He said, no, it is written for everyone who exercises the same faith just like Abraham. Am I right? So I took that step and I'm still going. And we have not even touched the big, we've not opened the big suitcase yet. And I'm waiting eagerly, telling God, you told, you showed me a big suitcase of, that we're going to open, a large church. We haven't done that yet. We are walking toward it. But it's not my timing. But I want to say, with every place God has given us the privilege to go and the people to serve, we have never had physically enough but we have always had leftovers. Why? Because it is in the blessing of God, it is not in what I have or don't have, if you know what I mean. Amen. God is telling some of us today to exercise the same faith that Abraham had. How is it going to happen? Don't worry about it. That is why you have him as your manager. Let him do the worry. You just do the obey. Come on, hallelujah. hallelujah. You just want to what? Obey. Your responsibility is to be busy obeying God and allow God to be God in providing and blessing and fighting for you. 